Well, good morning, Cornerstone family. Today is Palm Sunday, and as we celebrate that Jesus was walking into Jerusalem, being celebrated as the King of Kings, as the Lord of Lords, as Daniel 9 had predicted that the Messiah would come 480 years later into Jerusalem, being proclaimed, this is what we're celebrating today, and we're one week away from celebrating Easter Sunday. In fact, we're having the whole weekend as a celebration, starting on Saturday at 11 o'clock. We have a kid, family-friendly. It's going to be a awesome, lots of giveaways, bounce house, free food, hot dogs, all kinds of wonderful stuff. And then on Sunday, it gets even better on Sunday. Yes, we're going to celebrate Easter with lots of music and giveaways, as well as a, a golden ticket for our kids. That's going to be a very interesting and fun, exciting event. Well, I'm excited as we kick off next week, Easter, we're doing a, a giveaway of a book called uh, the God questions, and we're going to answer some very good questions that people are asking. Uh, do all roads lead to heaven? I, is is it all the same? Uh, is it going the same direction? You know, what is it all about? And and actually, you're going to be very surprised, and you're going to be enjoying this series because there's some great answers for us. Is the Bible true? Can we trust it? The question I think a lot of us been asking maybe this week. If God is good, why is there so much evil in the world? Why does he allow that, right? That's a great question. Um, we'll answer the question, how do you know for sure that you're saved? How do you know that you're going to heaven? Uh, these are questions that we're going to explore and, and see the answers. It's going to be very, very good for all of us. Well, our big idea today as we prepare for next week for Easter is we want to be a host, a host that helps people feel welcomed at church. When we started this year, we said we're going to be disciple makers. If you're a disciple of Christ, you're called not just to follow Jesus, but you're called to help other people to follow Jesus. So our theme has been to find and follow Jesus, right? That's what we're doing. And so we realize that eternity is at stake. We realize that people are more open right now to hear about the good news of Jesus Christ. In fact, there's a spiritual hunger going across this land. So we're inviting everyone. I want to invite you and your family, your friends, your neighbors to come out here on Easter Sunday. If you can't be here in person, do it online. Maybe do a watch party in your house. Uh, just share the good news of Jesus Christ. Well, let's talk about um, Luke chapter 18. As, as we get into 18 and 19 of Luke, Jesus is on his way to Jerusalem. He has made a commitment to go to Jerusalem to die for the sins of the world. In fact, before we read our story of the day, the story is Zacchaeus, by the way. You're going to enjoy this story. Uh, before we get to him, just to let you know, Jesus has made his decision. This is the timing. I'm going to Jerusalem. I'm going to die for the sins of the world. He tells his disciples, and they're like, wow, what? Well, I, this is this is." Do you have to? You know, I mean, can you imagine their Savior, you know, is going to die for the sins of the world? They're, they're in shock. They're a little bit like, okay, you know, we're with you all the way, right? And then Jesus pauses to heal a blind beggar. If I knew I was going to die, my time was limited, I'm not sure how much time I would have for anybody else. But he pauses and he takes time to heal a blind beggar. And then the next thing he does before Palm Sunday, the very next thing he does is he reaches out to Zacchaeus, an unlikely person that you would stop, spend any time with to share the good news of salvation because he, he has been a traitor to the Jewish people. He, he's a tax collector. He is a chief tax collector, in fact. Uh, they're in Jericho. So Jesus stops through Jericho on the way to Jerusalem. Uh, 
Jericho is a very fruitful area of Judea. In fact, it's a very wealthy area. It produces honey from bees. It, it has all kinds of fruit and trees and cypress trees and uh, fruit trees. It's a very plush area. And this guy, he's collecting all the taxes from all this, right? He's friends with the Romans. He, he's not friends with the Jewish people. In fact, he's hated. The city sat on one of the busiest trade routes of the ancient worlds with formalized connections to important coastal cities in northern Israel and to Egypt in the south. Jesus takes time on his way to die for the sins of the world to meet up with this one man that seems as far as you can get away from God. This man is Zacchaeus, the chief tax collector. Wealthy doesn't even begin to describe how, man, how wealthy this guy is. He's very wealthy, but he's also very hated by the Jewish people. And Jesus reaches out to him. And I want to think about this. If Jesus pauses before he dies for the sins of the world to reach out to an unlikely person, who do we need to be reaching out to? I mean, Easter's coming, a week away. This is your opportunity. Invite someone to come. If you can't come here on campus, do a watch party. Invite someone to join you, to worship with you, to the good news of salvation. I want to give us three ways that we can prepare for Easter. First, I want us to remove the barriers that keep people from seeing Jesus. Now, I, I, I've been watching The Chosen lately, and I don't know if you enjoyed that, that series. My wife and I, we binge watched it. This last five days, we watched the whole thing, all three seasons. It, it was really good to watch the character development. And as I've read through the Bible and, and read about Nicodemus as a tax collector and and Matthew as a tax collector, that's all I thought of them as, just a tax collector. I never thought about, what would it take for you to betray your people? I never thought about his backstory. I, I never thought about, how did it feel to be hated by your own countrymen? What kind of circumstances brought you to this decision of your life? And now do you regret it? And is there a way back to salvation? Is there a way back that you could actually come into temple and worship? Because right now, the answer is no. Your family would have disowned you. You're dead to them. So what would it take for you to be in that place and then your hopes and, and, and desires to somehow reconcile, somehow get right with God, Jesus comes looking for him. So what kind of barriers is he going through? Uh, let's re read this. Jesus entered Jer Jericho and was passing through. A man was there by the name of Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was wealthy, extremely wealthy. He, he's on top of the heap, right? He wanted to see who Jesus was, but being a short man, he could not because of the crowd. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore fig tree to see him since Jesus was coming that way. So what's some of the barriers? One, he's short, okay? So he's got to get up in the tree, right? There's a crowd. There's too many people, so he's got to get ahead of the crowd. Another barrier would be no one likes him. No one's inviting him to see Jesus. Not even the disciples. No one's looking out for, hey, where is that, that, that betrayer? <laughs> Let's see if he wants to come over and meet Jesus. No, no one's doing that. I, I think about the barriers on Easter Sunday. We have people that are in our community that may be thinking, would I be welcomed? Would people actually want to see me at church? Has anybody invited them? Your friends, your neighbors, they're more likely to say yes at any time of the year 
an invitation to church on Easter Sunday. Invite them. There's a spiritual hunger right now. Invite them. That's why we, we have these family cards and just, we're doing the whole weekend celebration. Saturday at 11 o'clock, Sunday at 11 o'clock, it's gonna be a great, uh, great event. It's gonna be a great time of celebration. Invite somebody. I, I think of other barriers that we might have. If you've been here at the 915 service lately, you notice that the parking lot is pretty full. Well, I'm part of that problem. My wife and I, we drive a car apiece. We don't need to, but... You know, I come really early at 7.15, and she doesn't come till 9.15. So on Easter, she's going to drive me, drop me off, and then go back home, and then she'll come back later on. I'm asking you to do that because we want to make sure that there is room in our parking lot for cars. What's another barrier? Well, people are going to feel a little bit awkward. I don't know where to go. You know, where where is the church? You know, is it... The youth building, is it in the back? Is it over here? So I, I, I encourage us to remove some of those barriers because people will be asking. They'll be wondering, you know, will I like it, right? I mean, there's these questions that are going in their mind. We need to be aware of that. I think they'll have an amazing time once they get here. But we need to encourage them. People often make up their, their mind in the first five seconds when they walk in. Is this a friendly place or not? You know, do I know where to go? Where's the bathroom? Where's the, where's the kids? Where do I take my, my toddler? Where do I take my grade school kid? Where do I, where do I take my teenager? You know, where do I, where do I find coffee? You know, can, can I bring coffee in uh, to the worship center? There's all these questions going through their minds. I, I want you to help me to remove those barriers. Then, then, Invite someone. Invite them to Easter services. Invite them to the whole celebration, Saturday at 11 o'clock, Sunday at 11 o'clock. Invite them. It's going to be a great time of worship. It's going to be a great time for our kids. Uh, our kids will have a blast on Saturday and Sunday, and this, it, it's themed a little bit different so that they won't lose interest. It's going to be a lot of fun. Again, bounce house, free food, free giveaways. Um, it's, it's just going to be amazing, off the hook amazing. Let's read on. Luke 19, 5. Uh, when Jesus reached the spot, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. So he came down at once and welcomed him gladly. What an honor to have Jesus. As you can tell, his um, fame has spread. This is right before Palm Sunday. So there are thousands of people that are interested in having a moment with Jesus. And Jesus is saying, I'm going to come over to your house. What an honor. What an honor. Invite somebody. Philemon is, is a short little letter that Paul wrote trying to help a man welcome back a servant. And he reminds him how important it is to share his faith. That all of us, if you are a believer, if you are a disciple of Jesus, you also are a disciple maker. And part of being a disciple maker is to share your faith. So he says, I pray that you may be active in sharing your faith so that you'll have a full understanding of every good thing we have in Christ. If you really want to understand the depth of your faith, if you want to understand the grace that God has given you, the mercy that God has given you, share your faith. Invite someone to know Christ. Invite someone to come to church. Invite someone out to lunch, dinner, or coffee. I Just be an inviter. This is the best time of year to invite someone. Jesus talked about the kingdom of heaven many times over. He gave parables. He gave analogies helping us to understand that it's, it's the pearl of great price. It's worth selling everything for to be in the kingdom of heaven. And in Luke 14, Jesus describes the kingdom of heaven as like a banquet that, that God wants everyone to come to his banquet. This is going to be 
better than what we serve on Sunday. Now, we have great food on Sunday and coffee, and, and, and this Easter is going to be even better than ever. Lots of giveaways and stuff. But can you imagine a feast put on by God himself. Can you, can you imagine, like, this is going to be the best barbecue bar none ever. You want to be there, and he sends out an invitation, but people come up with, with excuses why they can't come. You know, hey, I, I just bought some oxen, and I got to, you know, I got to, you know, work them out, you know, you know how it is, or, hey, I just bought this lot of land, and I, I got to figure it out, and I got to, and there's always these good excuses, of course, but they're still excuses, and God's saying, I want my, my house to be full. That's all analogy of this parable, and, and so after excuses, we read on, Jesus says, go out quickly into the streets, to the alleys of the town and bring the poor, the cripple, the blind, and the lame. They weren't invited. Let's go invite them. And that's not who you'd invite to your normal party, but it's like, I want my house to be full. Go invite them. So they do. Sir, the servant said, what you ordered has been done, but there's still room. Then the master told the servant, Go out to the roads and the country lanes and, and make them come in so that my house will be full. God wants heaven to be crowded, don't you? <laughs> and that's why we want our churches to be full. Our church and all the churches in the Poway area, we want them to be full so that people will accept God's good news of salvation in Jesus Christ so that heaven would be crowded. What are you doing? Are you inviting somebody? Are you just planning on coming? I hope you come. But I hope you also bring somebody with you. It's gonna be a day of celebration. It's gonna be one of the best days of the year. We need to be active in our faith. So I encourage you, remove the barriers and then invite someone to Easter. And, and then three, become a host on Sunday. Now this specifically uh, for this coming Sunday, on Easter Sunday, I want everyone that calls this church their home to be a host. This isn't the responsibility of just the elders or the deacons. This is the responsibility of everyone that would call this church their home. Be a host and welcome people. When you see a barrier, like, hey, there's no parking, you know, like help somebody find a parking space. Help them find where the, the nursery is. Help them walk them over to the, the kids' zone, you know, where the grade school kids are at. You know, walk them over to the teens' uh, area at, at 11 o'clock. You know, walk them over. Be a host. Don't just point where the coffee and cafe is at. Talk about it and walk them over there. Get to know them. You know, I, this is our opportunity to be welcoming for all people. I'm going to read you this verse uh, 7 and 8. All the people saw this. They, they saw Jesus with Zacchaeus, right, in his house. He's gone to be the guest of a sinner, right? Because this is the guy that's betrayed his people. Taxing them. But Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, Lord, look, Lord, here and now I give half of my possessions to the poor. And if I cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. Now I'll just pause for a moment. Look at the heart change. See, this is what the gospel does. When we come to know Christ as our Lord and Savior, it changes us from the inside out. That's why we always study God's word to apply in our lives. Immediately he's going, I need to take care of the poor. I have the means. I'm going to help the poor. I'm going to do that. And then he says, if I've cheated somebody, which he would know, okay, if he's a tax collector, he's really good with math. He's kept good records. It'll be really easy for him to find, oh, yeah, I, I, I cheated that girl, that guy. I'm going to give back four times. Not just what I owe them, 
Well, I don't give back four times what I've cheated them. What a heart change. This is what Jesus does in our lives. As some are, are pointing fingers saying, wow, you know, you shouldn't be hanging out with those people. Jesus is hanging out with those people and changing their lives. Understand, Jesus didn't just come and hang out with sinners. He came and he hung out with sinners and changed their lives to be different, to not be the same any longer, but to follow God. And I know many of you, you've had your life changed. I've had my life changed by meeting Jesus. This is what we want for our friends, our community. Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house because this man too is a son of Abraham. Pause, wait a minute. Son of Abraham, this tax collector? The Pharisees, you know, the, the other Jewish people are sitting in the room going, Nuh-uh, he's dead to us, man. I, he's dead to his own family. I, he's, he's betrayed us. Zacchaeus has been looking for a way to be reconciled back in his faith. I believe there will be people on Easter Sunday that will be looking for a way to be reconciled back in their faith, to know that there is hope, that there's forgiveness, that there's mercy. And Jesus right away affirms that with Zacchaeus. Salvation has come to this house because this man, he is a son of Abraham. For the son of man, speaking of himself, of Jesus Christ, the son of man, came to seek and to save what was lost. This title, son of man, was used throughout Daniel, especially Daniel chapter nine, as the prophecies from Gabriel, the angel Gabriel, gave to Daniel that the Messiah, the Savior of the world, the Son of Man, this is Jesus, God in flesh, is to die for the sins of the world. Jesus came to seek and save us. We need salvation. We don't need just a good sermon. We need more than that. We need salvation. So be a host. Romans 15, 7 says, Accept one another then, just as Christ accepted you, in order to bring praise to God. If you want to bring praise to the Lord, if you want to lift the name of Jesus up, then we should be loving and encouraging and inviting, accepting people into the church, helping them find and follow Jesus. We are disciple makers after all. And the way we accept one another and love on one another that's what makes the difference in the church. That's what makes a difference in our community. So what does it mean to be a host? What does it mean to be a host? Uh, just three simple things. One, look. Just look around. Look for someone that you don't know. Now, they may not be new to Cornerstone, but you don't know them, and that's okay. So please don't say, hey, are you new? No, 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 no. Just say, you know, I don't think I know you. Introduce yourself. Get to know them. And then two, introduce who you are, right? So you look for someone new, introduce yourself. And then three, you show them around the campus. Don't just point to the youth building. Just walk them over there. Have a conversation. Don't just point to the cafe. Walk them over there. Grab a cup of coffee with them. This is an opportunity to make a huge difference in people's lives. Get to know their names. And then I encourage you during the week, pray for them by name, that God would continue to work in their life, that they would experience salvation in Christ. So next step, next step, invite someone. Invite someone to Easter. Uh, and also, I want you to promote this on social media. I, I want to take a time that you would just promote, put a little post, hey, I'm coming to Easter at Cornerstone Church. And, and, and post it, you know? And then I'm encouraging you to join one of the discussion groups. 
They'll talk about the God questions. We're just going to do it for four weeks. It's going to be a very fast-paced, very exciting question and answer series. So for four weeks, we're going to dive into questions that people have about God and see biblical answers change lives. Would you pray with me? Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. Lord, we thank you that you invited us into a relationship with you. Lord, I know some of us, we felt like no one would want us in church. We felt like you wouldn't want us in heaven. But the truth is, Jesus, you you seek us. You are the great shepherd that leaves the 99 and you come over, come after just that one sheep like Zacchaeus, like us, like many who will be here on Easter Sunday. Lord, give us your compassion to help invite people to come to church on Easter Sunday. Give us the courage to invite people, to love on them, to care for them, to show them around campus, to buy them a cup of coffee, to celebrate with them that Jesus, you are alive. Lord, I pray for just an exciting transformation of lives on Easter Sunday. Lord, let us be part of what you're doing. It is in the powerful name of Jesus we pray. And God's people said, amen. If you made a decision today, if you want to be part of this this celebration on Easter Sunday, you know, again, I encourage you to be here on campus. Invite a friend, a family, come with them. Um, and if you can't, do a watch party in your home and, and really share this great news. All right, until Easter Sunday next week, God bless. <laughs>